Good morning guys, welcome back to the vlog and welcome back to another beautiful day in Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan and today's flight, we're going out to a bush location to get recurrent for going into bush locations. Because this whole COVID-19 thing is going on, our flying is extremely limited right now. So all of our pilots are going out to the same location to basically just do a bunch of landings. It'll be great fun, but join along and I hope you enjoy it. Good morning, November Tango Zulu request taxi. Two POB. November Tango Zulu Gorga Tower. Taxi 17 left on the backtrack lineup 1020. 1020, clear the backtrack lineup 17 left, November Tango Zulu. Alright, just gonna do a governor check as we pull out of here. And that's good. She's using her leg. Alright, we're nearly full up, so we're gonna rotate at 63. And come back in at 75 if we need to. Ignition is on, flaps are set. Indicated and verified. Radar's already done. If we do need to stop on the runway, or for not by 50 knots, by our taxiway. Full reverse, heavy braking, flaps up, cut off, pull off, shut off if we're going off. After takeoff, we're going to pitch ready five, consider EPL, consider feather. Otherwise, cut off, pull off, shut off, 80 full flaps, close to the ground, crack the doors, brace. Tower call. And we'll go just straight ahead to the road. Plus, we're well over a thousand feet. Front boards are done. Chin inlet and lights are done. Tower November Tango Zulu ready on lineup. 81 degrees, 1390 for 1440 on the torque. One runway, one spin left, left, take, and for takeoff. Take off left turn, November Tango Zulu. All right, harness is idle and go. Done. Condition, condition flaps. Pulling harnesses. Tate 63, 1390. Speed's alive. Rotate. And we are heavy. At above 85 knots, I'll reduce the flaps to 10 degrees. Looks like there's a bunch of those clouds right there. I think it's going to be pretty nice above, though. Could be. Above 90, 3 degrees. Air brought back to 2,000 RPM. IGT to 720 for our climb out. All right, put a bypass on, and ignition is off. Truck tower November Tango Zulu departed time one seven trekking one five one on climb that above nine thousand estimating at time four five November Tango Zulu just confirmed not above nine thousand hey from nine thousand November Tango Zulu contact must be one two zero seven six six two two one per mile one two zero seven six six two two one five November Tango Zulu so I'm just going to plan on just going right through that through that low blue sky is up there, because I'm not going to be out, able to outclimb that today. Sounds good. I'm just going to go ahead and bring it back to cruise, because I'm not really climbing. I'm just going to go over this side, because I've done this a few times where it's a low route, and it always works. You get right over that, and then you cut off to the left again, but all this stuff is just too much to muck to have look around in. Sounds good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit my nearest. Let me know. Turn 15 miles and turn my altimeter setting to 1010. I'm going to give Moresby a quick call. Moresby 120 decimal 7, November Tango Zulu transfer. I doubt we'll get dumped down here. Hopefully not. Going to. Moresby 6622, November Tango Zulu transfer. Moresby 6622, November Tango Zulu transfer. What was that, Sam? I don't know. Moresby 1207, November Tango Zulu. Looks like it clears up right past this little hill right here. Oh, it's gonna be nice. <sighs> Let's see what other. Oh, this doesn't have the radio frequencies card anymore. Oh, that's weird. Must have gotten knocked off. Uh, 6622. 
Callers be 5565 November Tango Zulu transfer. Morning November Tango Zulu, 18 miles to the southeast Garoka and climb 900,000, estimating sent any time 4 2. Climbing to 900,000, November Tango Zulu. Good morning, 1010 November Tango Zulu. I don't know how he knows my name unless he watched one of my videos. I just bumped up my ITT up to 720 for my climb. Now that we're at 8,000, we've got another 1,000 feet to go. Oh, that's really irritating. I don't think that the audio for some reason picks up on the HF radio. It sounds like a bunch of aliens talking. That sounds like uh, the bar scene from Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, it's just another beautiful morning out, isn't it? Yeah, maybe we're in the transition uh, season already. Uh, it feels like uh, over the past couple, like, I don't know, I guess past couple five or six days, the afternoon, the sun feels way more intense. It's just yeah. like a lot hotter. Nice, this, this rainy season Cause it's wasn't... Actually, it's because it's actually there. <laughs> this rainy season wasn't nearly as bad as last year. My goodness. I had so much more weather last year to deal with. This year, I think I've had maybe one time where there was no other options to go through it. But last year, it was like maybe 10 times. That was just way more stressful. This isn't aiming for the Marawaka Gap or anything. Didn't have the Marawaka Gaps saved in it. It's all right, I can see it. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have the Marawaka Gap saved in it? No, oh, in the flight plan. Like no, the other sure. aircraft usually, well, when I brought it up, it didn't have it in there. I'm gonna have to go back and change a few of those because I think this actually, I think, let me just see. Um, yeah, see this one's the one that flips off. Yeah. And I wasn't able to finish it, so there's a few of them that I didn't get quite in. A lot of the wee whack ones aren't even in there at all. So, although Kilo stopped doing that, it was also doing that, so I need to go back and finish putting those in. All right, just bringing my torque back down to 1,250 foot pound of torque, now that we're leveled off at 900,000. It's gonna bring my ITT back down, usually around 680 to 685, but hey, in this airplane, it's a lot cooler. Let me bump it up to 1,250 and see. Uh, 673, this one's a little bit cooler than the others. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and bring out the iPad. And brief while we have a spare second. We're gonna go ahead and bring up the four flight app. Open the strip chart. The elevation's 5500, but our touchdown zone is 5,300 feet, so we're going to set up our pattern altitude at 6,300. Overall slope is 7%. At the top, runway 28, we'll set that up into our OBS. Once we get closer, and length is 540 meters. So the touchdown zone is only, I think, 3 or 4% or slope, and we're going to just shoot for there's like the little hump in there. I'm just gonna shoot to land just past the hump so I kind of land on a little bit of a downhill and then up, making sure that I don't pull back on the yoke like I normally would as I'm taxiing. Last time, I had a, I asked if they would fix it, but there was a couple of like grass clumps and I hit one of those as I was taxiing, just like a fast taxi right after I'd just gone out of reverse. It, and the whole front end probably popped up about four feet off the ground. I thought I was going to have a tail strike on it. So it happened to me last time I went in there. There's a, actually a, a hard spot there. Yep. And uh, if you don't get it slowed down enough, and you, yeah. have, you have a little bit of FCG, it, uh, it does a pop. Yeah, we walked down there, looked at it with Andrew, and had the guys that were going to be working on it. Here's what we need <laughs> Here's what we need to have done soon. So remember not to actually pull back on the yoke so that that does not happen again this time. Yeah, we'll land. This feather, you can jump out. Um, ran the numbers on that. I got it on my iPhone here. If you want to look at it, uh, if we land at 750, what are we going to land at here? 
Uh, we should be about 750. I'll bring it up and, on this uh, so I can record I have you it. at 96, you're probably 85. So we can pull 85. That out. And so you'll be minus 199. Uh, and 190 is the uh, is the strip penalty. Okay, so let me just bring it up on this just because I can record this on the video. So I have the runway penalty at 190. Or minus 102 for the seats. Co-pilot, you're at 100. And we've got 740, and then we're going to burn. 750 should be about what you take yep. off with. Landing with a 750. So we can barely just do it within our strip. So I've got basically 7 kgs available for this specific strip penalty for takeoff. But at different runways, um, we have different strip penalties depending on maybe how the slope or the length or depending on how draggy the grass is or different things about the airstrip. So that's what the airstrip penalty is, is what we're talking about. All right, so we are heading to the Marawaka Gap. That will allow us to go down easy. I'm just going to go ahead and put it in here just so I can put in my descent rate and all that and show them how I do that. Just back up here to the Marawaka Gap. Get through at 8400 at the lowest. Looks like there's some clouds so we might actually just have to go up high but I usually put in at least 100 to 200 feet over top of my gaps. Just in case there's any turbulence or anything like that it just makes it more comfortable for passengers and whatnot so we'll just come in probably at a thousand feet per minute on our descent rate today. We'll need to build circuit elevation for Sydney. I'll put that in after, but because once I get past the Marawaka Gap, I'm just going to continue down at probably like 800 to 1,000 anyways. Are you setting it up for your descent? To I'm the just Marawaka setting Gap. up my descent for that first, for the first drop down in. And it looks like there's some clouds. We could actually probably even go over more to the, more to the what was it, south southwest, and actually drop in the valley of that way as well. So let me just see where. We're Straight ahead, that way is St. Denny. Actually, it looks a little bit nicer over that way. Oh, well, we'll get over the cl closer to this cloud and then we'll decide what we want to do. So we'll come in this way and just drop down. It looks like there might be possibly a lower line, so rather than waste my time going over there, I can see the ridge over here, so I'm just going to come over and then just drop down quickly. I don't have any passengers, so it makes it easy doing that. We're 12 miles out from the Marawaka Gap, so I'm just going to go ahead and get that out of there. And just have a good direct back to my big map page. There's a lot more cloud out here than what Windy app was forecasting, or even showing for this specific time. A lot more. I think the low cloud function on there is harder to forecast than it is thunderstorms and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, we're going to be starting our descent here shortly, so I'm going to go ahead and start going through my checklist. My selectors are good. My fuel is evened out. Check my brakes already. I've disabled our terrain awareness system. And we don't use the yaw dampener. Go ahead and set my uh, weight. We're at 7,000 pounds now. So we're going to be landing at 74. This just showed up, so we'll delay a little as we work the load. That's our other airplane. They're just waiting on some extra packages to also come out here. Like I said earlier, we have two airplanes coming out here with four pilots total just to get recurrent for bush flying. The VREF is set up. We're 10 miles out. Put landing light on, pulse light on. And we're below 140. We're going to start a descent. So I usually put it in bypass just because I'm going to be going close to the ground over top of the ridges where probably birds be flying. So we'll talk about our abort procedure on this one. It's close to the end of the threshold, not quite. And we're going to power up 20 degrees of flaps straight ahead to the end of the runway and then make a sharp right hand turn back out, resetting our power up to 740 for the climb out. All right, autopilot is off. Might be able to get everything done before they even arrive. If uh, we just dump it all real quick, and we can just be totally out of the way for them. We can do our go arounds. Well, you did your go around this month, right? I did my go around. Yeah, I'll yep. just do a go around at Garoka. So, do you still want to just jump out? Do I'll still jump out. You get yours done. We'll quickly unload the cargo, and we should, I should be able to get mine done actually before they arrive. Yeah, that sounds great. And uh, before the winds pick up. Oh, 
stabilization. Kodiak November Tango Zulu, Niner Miles to the north, Niner Thousand on descent, circuit time, 401. All right, so I'm going to hit my OBS button here and move this to runway 28. That's just going to draw a nice line there to show me where my runway is at all times. We got one more ridge to head over top before we start our descent. 6,300, like I said earlier, is going to be our pattern altitude. We're going to want 74 on final, 84 on base, 94 on downwind. All right, we'll just start reducing our power so we can make a decently quick descent down to 6,300. Just on the other side of those mountains right there. Our prop board just to help us slow down a little bit more and keep our speed lower in the descent. I call and cancel our SAR for now because I won't be able to get them down there probably. 45565 November Tango Zulu in the circuit. Cancel SAR. Five five six five November Tango Zulu in the circuit cancel SAR. I think he said SAR watch terminate. I tend to give you claps. Orange me six six two two November Tango Zulu in the circuit cancel SAR. All right, I'm not going to worry about it right now. We'll try again on the ground. All stations. November Tango Zulu's in the circuit. All right, props and harnesses are done. All right, gonna bring our torque back to 400 foot-pound of torque. Started to descent to 6,300. I'm a little bit high, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a 20 degrees of flaps in and below 120 knots. And we're gonna to wanna to touch down right about where the wind sock is. Probably about 60 to 7, probably 60 or 70 meters in from the very end of the runway. All right, it looks like the wind is calm at this time. Nice. Yep, get our wind, our landings done before it picks up. Exactly. Josh or Brent can deal they, with they the wind. They can deal with that. <laughs> uh, at least we got two of us. If, uh... Yeah. No, it looks completely calm. They said it was dry over the past few days. Nothing's on the runway, no kids, I don't see any animals, dogs, or anything like that. We're approaching 6,300. I'm going to set my bug up here to make me nice and parallel. The thing I started doing is pulling my coffee mug out of the cup holder. Oh, so it doesn't bounce I out? I had to jump into my lap one time. <laughs> Alright, at one mile out from it, I'm going to turn my downwind, shooting for 94 knots and 6,300 to beam the numbers. 20 degrees of flaps, which is when normally I'd put this in and beam the numbers. Returning final at 5,800, turning base at 6,000. There's 94 knots, and just lining up parallel with the runway at this time. I have 11 knots off of my left wing at this altitude. Right at this next runway up here, we're going to make a our base turn at 6,000 feet, heading for 84 knots. Heading final 5,800. Right, three knots here, so it's dropped down around the corner. There's 84 knots, 5,900. 500. 100 feet more to go before turning final. Imagining we'll have a little bit of a quartering tailwind. There's 5,800, full flaps, checklist complete as far as we can go for now. 74 knots. Four, bounce around a little bit. Now the wind's coming from the other direction, five knots. A little bit off to the left. All right, we've got 600 feet on our descent, looking for 74. 500. Up on committed, we're very heavy today, so a little tiny below. At 74 knots, 
Six knots on our left. I'm calling committed at this point. Committed to land. Below sinker. 500. All right, right where this thing is right here. Oh, all right, I'm showing you. <laughs> right there is where I hit last time. Oh. And there too. <laughs> yep. All right. Low idle, flaps at 20. I'm gonna go ahead and... Uh, Just line up the top and I'll jump out. Okay. 